Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and uh, you know more little observations on this device uh, concerning battery life um, tomorrow I plan to actually turn it on uh, early morning and leave it on on battery for as long as it's gonna actually run and see how long the battery is gonna last um, right now it's on battery and it's been on battery for the past five hours so it's actually not that bad on battery right now when you consider that it's been about five hours so uh, of course there's an internal rechargeable lithium-ion battery in here uh, that is charged through a usb port on the back uh, sensitivity wise i mean this thing is sensitive uh, right now you're listening to the uh, shannon volmet station in ireland and it's receiving it well, it's on the MLA30 loop. I haven't seen really many signs of overloading, but then again, I do need to test it more for that. I am pleasantly surprised at this little radio, um, but um, you know, it's, it's a little expensive for what it is, considering you can get some decent portables. Um, there is a little bit of FM breakthrough on this radio on the telescopic. So this is one thing that you need to know. You know, you guys know how tough the environment here is and unforgiven, unforgivable for radios that can't perform well under the pressure of strong FM uh, signals all around. Uh, this one, it's not totally bad but there are frequency ranges where there's definite FM radio station breakthrough on the telescopic antenna. Now it doesn't happen on the MLA-30 because the MLA-30 is not very sensitive to that um, 80, you know, around 80-90 megahertz. So it prevents that from happening when I'm on the long one, on the uh, MLA-30 loop, sorry. But when I put the telescopic it definitely is uh, does have some FM breakthrough on it. I think the menu and the way that the things have been thought of is not bad. Uh, you know, there's been some thought be behind this radio and between the menus because almost every option that you wish you want to have is actually there. Uh, somebody was mentioning, does the uh, S meter work? Yes, it does, definitely. Um, it's just that right now it's too weak of a signal or it's just because I'm in the sideband but uh, many times I've seen the, the S meter move uh, so it definitely does work the power is here you see it move a little bit here it has a noise level right now um, you know it's it's awkwardly slow I think if somebody wants to go nuts is the fact that you got to be patient and um, so when you, I, you know, I've learned to use it in the past 24 hours. I was pressing too fast in general, but when you actually learn that you just press and hold for an instant, um, that's when you learn that, you know, just take your time and it responds to your commands. Uh, so this is something you need to know. I like the display, it's bright, it's beautiful, um, and I, I kind of like it. Um, I see a lot of bad things on this radio, um, on some other YouTube channels. I don't necessarily share that. I, I have a good experience with it. But like I said in one of my videos, this does not replace a good portable, you know. If I had to, to, to choose between this and, and an XHD to D808, it'd definitely be an XHD to D808 instead. No ferrite in it, no internal ferrites, by the way, guys. So that means medium wave and long wave relies on the antenna that is plugged on the radio. This is important to know. And the reason they did not put the internal ferrites is probably because there would be too much noise generated by the radio itself inside that box. And yesterday some people have mentioned, well, you know, it seems to be close to the computer. 
Um, it's not a computer. That noise was really internally generated. And um, it, plus the fact that I had a really good shielded cable also from the outside in. I will still, because, you know, um, I think a good test and good observation is to try it in different environments. So I, I will kind of do another medium of scan with the radio placed differently um, out of curiosity, just in case that, well, maybe it could have happened. Um, you know, I, I like the fact that you guys do observe a lot of stuff on my videos and, and, and you know, see the surrounding and it's like, oh man, maybe because of this or that. And, you know, it raises questions and I like that. So it's kind of cool. But um, I'm, I'm pleased with what that is. And I have fun with it. And I think that's the, the cool thing. It mutes when tuning, but like a lot of DSP radios, so you can hear it here. UK Royal Air Force in 5450 kilohertz. And of course, the fine tuning, do press on that button here, and uh, you have the fine tuning that is right here that you play with. Encoder works great. Uh, a lot of people have been saying the encoder on this one is better than the other one. Uh, I'm not so sure it's different. Uh, the only thing different is it's got a big button because uh, I haven't had any problems with the other encoder so I'm curious as to what people are saying when they say it's better um, my take on it is it's the same thing it's just that it's got a big button rather than a smaller one uh, maybe I've missed something but uh, yeah, kind of interesting observations to, to check out here for sure so, uh, of course, uh, more on this little radio. I think a lot of you are kind of intrigued at this little device. And giving my personal observations on it. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.